sensation. Pain? I'm alive? That's odd. I don't feel alive. What's going on? I have no memories of anything before this point in time. My mind is tabula rasa, yet I have a language. I seem to be in some laboratory of sorts. Maybe I can find out what happened if I look around. My very first memory is waking up on this thing. Before that, nothing. I wonder what I am. A torture device turned into a strange machine. What kind of place is this? of natural philosophy and chemistry, something by an M.W. Shelley. There's a handwritten note here. Maybe it can shed some light on my situation. Is not the time. There's a screwdriver in this toolbox. Better take it. Now is not the time. I have no idea what's inside of this, but it glows. A human skull or a paperweight. It's a brain in a jar. I wonder what it's thinking. Ooh, surgical tools. Shiny. That is one ugly gargoyle. Looks like a George to me. The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able to unscrew these hinges, though. The screws on these hinges are rusty and stuck. I need some lubricant to loosen them up. With such a multitude of jars and bottles, at least one must have some sort of oil in it. This oil looks expensive. Let's waste it. The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able I smeared some oil on the rusty screws. That should loosen them up. I'm free! What a dedicated night to guard a damp dungeon like this. Maybe he was demoted. Maybe he likes the dark. Maybe he's secretly a poet. I bet his name is Roland. Another piece of paper. This was written long before the last one.
It looks like someone has been sleeping quite a lot in this sorry excuse for a bed, and it was hardly the suit of armor. But why would someone choose to sleep down here? More writings from the lonely doctor. Another locked door. Let's take a peek through. It's the key I'm after. I can't reach it with my hands. I wonder what I can invent to retrieve it. The screwdriver is too short. It's the key I'm after. I can't reach it with my hands. I wonder what I can invent to retrieve it. There's a long stick here. Perhaps it was used to try to chase away rats when trying to sleep. Another locked door. Let's take- The stick is long enough to reach the key, but how will I- The stick is long. The screwdriver is. It's the key I'm after. I. Can the stick is long. like the legs of a frog hooked up with wires. And I'm pretty sure it moves when I'm not watching. The toolbox is empty. Now is not the time. Magnets. Another locked door. Let's hope. Aha! Just as planned. I got the basement key! Let's unlock this door. Let's unlock this door. More letters. Has he figured it out?
couple of cogwheels on the floor. They must have fallen off the mechanism when the door slammed shut. I wonder if I can put them back. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. I don't know why I thought... The doctor is losing it. He's just scribbling down nonsense by now. What will he do if he ever acts on his wild suspicions? It's a mortar. And they seem to belong here, but I'll remember where they are in case I need them another time. It's a mortar. They a big and heavy candlestick. It looks like there used to be two of them. A beautiful china bowl. It looks hand painted. The story is so sad. I don't even know if I want to read this one. The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. This must be the ashes of Wolfram's son. The label says Dr. Wolfram von Trauerschloss. So this is the man who brings the dead back to life. He looks at- It's warm. I haven't realized until now just how cold my body is. I wonder where the other candlestick is gone. <gasps> A dead body! <gasps> it's the body of Dr. Von Trauerschloss. He's dead. And what's more, he's been murdered. But who could have done this? There must be some clues around. The missing candlestick. And it seems to be the murder weapon. There's something in his pocket. It's a small, delicate key. He kept it in the pocket closest to his heart. I wonder what it unlocks. There's a letter clutched in his hand. His final words? Or a clue left by the killer.
the body is still warm. He cannot have been dead for much longer than I have been alive. Did he have to die for me to live? The back of his head has been cracked open by a heavy blow. He couldn't have seen the attack coming. He was dead before he knew what happened. So, he trusted his assailant then? Was it me? I have no memories from my life before. Maybe it was I who killed him. But then, how was I brought back? This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of this story. That won't work. Interesting, but no. It's an old clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Another journal page. This one has drops of blood on it. This room looks completely abandoned. I suppose this is what happens when you're down to a skeleton crew of only one maid, no matter how fantastic she is. Another portrait. It says her name is Francisca Canosa, an old relative, no doubt. But I wonder how she relates to the von Trauerschloss family. That's a lot of books. Imagine you had books filled with every possible combination of letters. I wonder how much room they would take. There's a finite amount of letters, but unless we acknowledge a maximum length of a word, there would still be an infinite number of combinations, and the library would have to be infinitely large. The doctor's handwriting. I know it well by now.
I should sit down and write a story, but with all these journals and diary pages lying around, it seems like I already may have. Look, a perfect sphere. Let's see if I can get two parallel lines to intersect. Look at all these old toys. Wind-up dolls, music boxes, and mechanical trains all around. I think this used to be a private hobby of the eccentric Dr. Wolfram's, before he got into the whole corpse business. I'm not going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it somehow if I want to proceed. I'm not going near that horrible a lot of books. Imagine- One more Belladonna letter. Let's read about this Clara figure. There's a bottle of milk out here. I wonder how long it's been here. At any rate, it's frozen completely solid. It says, Snowflake the pet cat. How cute. The stone is so old and the name is worn off. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. A note. Yes, those are indeed boxes. More letters. Can someone tell me what happened to poor Cl Object standing in a pot, a man made object. 
The plant can consume nutrition and grow bigger, and the pot can't. Neither of them can think. So what about me, then? I can think. I know that. But am I natural or man-made? This lantern might prove to be the very first thing that actually manages to shed some light on my situation. I'll keep it. <laughs> Belladonna. This little plant has caused a lot of trouble. For a flower, it's not particularly beautiful, but for a murder weapon, it sure is. It's a large tree. It looks very peaceful. Couldn't I have been reincarnated into one of those instead of being forced back into this mess? Look, a journal page was hiding behind the plant. Nothing inside. What a marvelous mausoleum. The plaque says, Francisca Canosa. This must be the resting place of the lady from the portrait in the study. It's a mortar. They seem to belong here, but I'll remember- It's a mortar. I'll let it stand by the fire for a while. It's warm. I haven't realized until now just how cold my body is. It's thawed. The milk is now in liquid form. The milk pours easily. Is this how Clara died? going near that. Yes, this should put an end to the grim reign of this beast. Look, it's a key, and it has a funny tassel attached to it. No wonder the cat wanted to play with it. The animal must have managed to steal a key somehow. This is strange. This is Belladonna's signature, but the handwriting is just wrong.
The door is locked. That's a big wardrobe. I bet you could hide a corpse in there. Actually, I better not open it and check. Let's take a look inside. Coils of rope. I wonder why we're keeping rope in the bedroom. I wonder if this key fits. There's a key hidden inside. A very important one. The mirror is completely shattered. I think someone in here didn't really like their reflection. A note. Clara, it really is you. I was so certain I'd never see you again. You didn't wake up. I... I woke up. I've been wandering lost ever since, trying to find out what's going on. How are you feeling? Do you remember me? I have no memories of you, or of myself. But I found some notes lying around. I can only assume you're the one called Belladonna? I am Belladonna. Murdered and reanimated by Dr. Von Trauerschloss. At first a mindless mechanical doll, but I slowly regained control over my brain. And when the time was right, I broke free. I saw the doctor's body. Yes, I crushed his skull. Standing over his blood-soaked remains, I was free at last. But where did I come from? If he was dead, was it you who brought me back? Yes, my love. You were the only thing on my mind, as I stood there, alone and victorious. I had secretly watched the doctor's process, and I desperately wanted to believe that I could get you back. I unearthed your grave and carried your dead body down to the laboratory. I did everything right, to the smallest detail, but you didn't wake up. And my time was running out. I can't turn my own key, and now that I was alone in the castle, I knew my life force would run out quickly. But for all my effort, you remained dead, and with no one to keep me vital, I eventually sat down here and just... stopped. But I did wake up. Yes, apparently you did. Your body had been in the ground for quite some time. Perhaps that made the reanimation process slower, but with your key powering your brain directly, you did not have to go through the drawn-out, sluggish wake-up. I take it your cognitive powers and language have been with you from the start. Well, yes. 
excellent. Then I have even improved on the doctor's method. But I doubt independent thinking and free will was ever in his interest to reproduce. Do you think you could do it again? Create more of us, you mean? Yes, I hold the secret of life and death, and I plan to use it. The experimentations must continue. And the two of us will have no place in this world. Quite right. So, we'll make us a place. Dead bodies will never be in short supply. We'll make more of our kind. A whole new race of the damned. Where do we start? I know for a fact that there's a fresh body lying out there in the Great Hall. The Doctor. His flesh, at least. We won't be using his wretched brain. I've already destroyed it in any case. But the body will do. We will have to find a few other ingredients. Will you help me? I... Of course I will. Thank you, my love. I'll carry the body down to the laboratory and start with the preparations. And in the meantime, you can help me with a few other things. The doctor's brain is completely destroyed. I made sure of that. I don't think any of us want his villainous brain back amongst us. We're going to need to find a new one. Secondly, we will also need some clockwork parts. We have to manufacture a force to keep the dead body going. Thirdly, not only the brain, but also the head and the cranium were damaged. If we can find a new head, that would save a lot of reconstructing effort. Clockwork? Yes, we need something to supply the body with the force to move. We can't make the heart beat again, so we use the spring-loaded clockwork. In the future, we'll have to think of a source of parts more reliable than salvaging old-time pieces, but that'll do for now. I see. Thank you. Will we need to find a fresh human head? Yes, I've smashed up the head of Wolfram rather frivolously. I'm afraid it's beyond rescue. I was thinking of my grandmother, Francesca Canosa. I'm sure you've seen her portrait in the study. She was buried some time ago, but her cranium should be sufficiently preserved. She rests in the mausoleum in the cemetery outside, but there is a hidden way into the tomb behind the armor in the basement. I'll go take a look behind the suit of armor. Thank you. Some things have been puzzling me. Did I used to have hair? You had beautiful hair. Unfortunately, I had to shave it all off in order to operate on your head and open your cranium. Yet, you're not bald. I was revivified directly after my death, when my body was still fresh. You, my dear, had been in the ground for quite some time. I had to reconstruct large parts of your decomposed corpse. That explains the metal construction holding together my skull. I have my fair share of screws and bolts myself, but they are carefully hidden. I opted to sacrifice your pretty hair so that I could work more on preserving your brain. Something the good doctor did not do for me. Will it grow back? I... I don't rightly know. Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. What is this I'm wearing? I'm so sorry about that. I covered you in scraps and bandages I found in the laboratory. I had to cut open and discard most of what you were buried in, in order to stitch you up. I want you to know that my plan was to be right next to you when you woke up, to help you understand and to find a proper dress. I'm so sorry it didn't come to pass like that. On my way in here, I killed a cat. It was in my way, and it felt so natural to just dispose of it. It worries me a bit. How so? I may have a functional brain, but what about a... a soul? Shouldn't there be something in me stopping me from hurting others? Or at least making me feel bad about it? You're right. It did come very natural for me to murder my husband. But I'm not too worried about this. I have no desire to commit unnecessary killings and I do have control over my actions. What if you're raising an army of cold-hearted mass murderers? They won't be mass murderers any more than you and I. 
And besides, why should we prioritize the lives of the living above the lives of the dead? I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. Why did you put this wind-up mechanism in my head? Yours is in your back. Yes, the damned doctor had placed my wind-up mechanism in my back. It goes straight into my chest and heart, giving me a strong central of power. But it is placed outside my own reach. So, you can't turn it yourself? No, I can't. I have to depend on others. That's why I chose to put the key in the back of your head, well within reach of your own hands. I know what it means to not be in control of your own existence, and I will never put someone else in the situation I'm in. Thank you. Of course. I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. I'll start looking for the objects then. Thank you. Come talk to me if there's something you're unsure about. That's a big wardrobe. Bet you could hide. Thaw the milk, grind the leaves, poison the cat. That was a lot of work to inspect this rather uninteresting ladder. I see a lot of mechanical parts in the That won't work. That won't work. This faithful screwdriver will do the trick. Time to turn this old clock into a slightly peculiar wardrobe. Belladonna was right. There is a secret switch behind Roland the It's too dark down there. I won't see my hands in front of me unless I light the crypt up first. Yes, I can lower the lantern into the hole. Amazing. I must be directly underneath the mausoleum in the cemetery. I can't believe it. It's another letter. How did it end up down here?
here's Francisca's coffin, but the lid is much too heavy for me to lift. Maybe I could break it open, but I'll need some sort of big hammer or mace for that. The things one does for love. You look very peaceful, but I do so need your head. How shall I remove it? With some surgical tool from the laboratory, perhaps? Another angel. Are you the third sibling? What did you do to get put down here? Is your name Gwendolyn? Now to carefully remove the head. It's remarkably well preserved. body of a deranged murderer, the decomposed head of an old lady, the brain of a small child. How could this possibly go wrong? Don't you worry, little pile of flesh and bones. We'll soon have you up and walking again. I'll let Belladonna handle that. Welcome to the Lab of Horrors. I have Francesca's head. Well done. Just give it to me and I will attach it to the neck. I took some parts from the old clock. Well done. Let me put them into the creation. I have the brain. Well done. Please give it to me. I found something else in the crypt. Another note. When I'd written myself when I was alive. I think we need to talk. What is the matter, dear? It's just... I... Oh, forget it. It doesn't matter. Let's focus on what we're doing here. Yes, let's get this creation moving. I'll get going. Now is not the time. Don't you worry, little pile of... Don't you worry, little... I'll let Belladonna handle that. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. The creation is complete. All we need to do now is force life into these dead limbs. That big switch on the wall initiates the procedure. Will you have the honor, my dear? Gladly. The time has come. I've wanted to pull this thing since the first time I saw it. 